All right, hey, thank you very much for coming. Student Nursing Club again today. Um, help yourself to some food, you know the procedure now, and it works pretty well, it's pretty good stuff. Um, today we have a real special treat, I think, with Ms. Elaine Montano. I had the pleasure and honor to do uh, my uh, one of my observation days in her um, office, and uh, it was really eye-opening what's going on out there in the world of um, of uh, diabetes, of obesity, of uh, of controlling uh, the disease, and uh, and I thought that Elaine is an excellent, excellent teacher and educator. And what I really like, she runs her own business, so she's not just an excellent nurse and talks about diabetes, but she runs a she runs a she's an entrepreneur and she runs a business that's ever expanding, and uh, uh, that's really very interesting for me for my what I want to do with my career in nursing. So if you have any questions, not just about diabetes, but also, you know, what would it take to, to be on your own out there? I think Elaine is an excellent person to talk to. Anyway, that's all we got, and here she is. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm going to give you guys a few questions before we start. How many of you know somebody that has diabetes? How many of you work with people that have diabetes? I'm going to ask you a few questions. Is it a myth or a fact? The diabetes is a fairly easy disease to manage. Anybody else feel differently? So you feel it's a hard disease to manage. Why? No one wants to give up carbs. Is it hard to comply with? I think it should be easier to manage, but makes you have to do a lot of lifestyle changes that you love. Mm -hmm. Do we blame people? Do we blame others for a, the disease process? That, or do you hear patients say, it's not my fault, it's somebody else's fault? I shouldn't have this. I certainly do. I've been diabetic since I was nine years old. I'm an insulin pumper. I wear an Omnipod. My pump is attached to me. This is what it is, and this is my personal diabetes manager. This talks to this, but it feeds me insulin 24 hours a day. And this one's so convenient because I don't have to carry this everywhere I go. As long as I'm not eating, I don't need this. This is also my glucose monitor, though. So I like this. There are many pumps. Medtronic's pump. This is another one of the pumps I've worn in the past. I didn't like this one because I didn't like being tethered to anything. I'm a very active person, so this was a pain. This is Anonymous pump, very similar to the Medtronic's pump. Same kind of business. Programming has been, become very easy. Diabetes is still a very d difficult disease to manage. Why? Does anybody know why? Other than it's hard to give up carbs? You need a lot of knowledge. About it's a lot of knowledge. It's a compilation of diseases. It's not one disease. It's hypertension, it's hyperlipidemia, it's high blood sugars, it's neuropathy, it's nephropathy, it's retinopathy. It's a whole lot of different disease processes that have to be managed in order to have some sort of quality of life. And patients, most type 2's are overweight, most type 1's aren't. But nevertheless, you get the same end damage if you're poorly controlled which is amputation, dialysis, blindness, cardiac disease, cardiac failure. All of it comes whether you're type 1 or type 2. So the goal in teaching patients is lifestyle, is how to eat properly. It's how to become a self-manager. One of the issues patients strongly believe is that it's the healthcare provider's responsibility to manage their disease. I can't go home with every patient every night. I can't be on the phone saying, well, you need this many units of insulin now, or take your metformin now, or your Genuvia now. They need to know, they need to learn how to manage their own diabetes. Our responsibility is to give them the tools to do that with as healthcare providers. And that's why I spend a good deal of my time, even in my practice, teaching as well as managing. 
That's why I keep things like this. This sits in each one of my exam rooms. It's a diabetic ulcer. And the reason I do this is because patients that are early onset diabetes don't believe this can happen to them. But I've seen it in pre-diabetes. Even pre-diabetes, if it isn't managed properly, is going to lead to complications. It's a given. So what we're doing now these days, I do something like this called journey for control. I play games with my patients. I ask them questions like, if you have diabetes, you should only eat small amounts of starchy foods. Is that a myth or a fact? Small amounts of starchy foods? It depends on the starchy food. Okay. There are all kinds of starchy foods. There are potato chips and there are potatoes. There are cookies and there are candies. There's grains like rice, but it's also a starch. There's pinto beans or any bean, but it's also a starch. So we teach patients to eat the more complex starches instead of the simple starches or simple carbs. We also treat them, teach them to create balance with what the food they eat. And as you see, as we go through this, we talk about myths and facts. We talk about the definition, because how often have you heard it's only a little bit of sugar? Diabetes is not just a little bit of sugar. Does sugar cause diabetes? Is that a myth or a fact? It's a myth. You know of people that live on sugar and never get diabetes. You know, that's their, their daily meal is Drinking 12 of these, this is a soda pop. A 12 ounce can of Coke, Pepsi, Dr. Pepper, Orange Crush. This is how much sugar they get on a daily basis. And when you compare it to half a cup of Jello, you look at the tube sizes, you know you're getting a lot of sugar. The fact is that sugar leads to obesity, obesity leads to diabetes. So that's what we're teaching our patients these days. We're also talking about their feelings, how they feel when they're first being diagnosed. Anybody here is willing to tell us if they have diabetes besides myself? Any type 2s? That's nice to see. It's rare that I'm in a room where nobody has type 2 diabetes. That's really good to see. Keep up the good work. But the feelings people feel are everything you see up here. They start with denial, not me. I don't have diabetes. You know, I've got a little bit of sugar, but I don't got diabetes. They get angry because they're then feeling the negative effects of uncontrolled blood sugars. They get frustrated because then they say, I'm going on a diet, I'm eating all the right foods, I'm walking every day, but I'm not losing weight. My sugars aren't getting better controlled. What am I doing wrong? They feel guilty because they think they may die early and leave family behind or because they feel they caused it. And then at the end they feel hope as they better become educated on how to manage their own diabetes. I always tell my patients, diabetes is your disease, it's not mine. I have my own disease to deal with and I do. And I tell them, I'm here to help you and guide you, but I can't make you do it. I can't make you uh, create the lifestyle changes you need. I can't force you to exercise. I can't force you to read a book to learn about diabetes management. The choices are always theirs. Now, is there something we can do to get them to change? Yes, we do blood work. We show them what's going on with their bodies. We do classes like this. We get them in contact with other people with diabetes. I've had Journey for Control. I teach five-week courses of Journey for Control. By the end of the five weeks, we end up finding out that a lot of people in the class are neighbors or live in the same neighborhood, and they form up walking groups, exercise groups, because they're in the same area. Women that work in the same building of an office at the state, they become friends and start walking at noon. 